On April 1st of 2021, Overkill added a comically large spoon to the game. Along with it came a community challenge. Reach 5 million kills with it as a community and unlock a golden version of the comically large spoon. To no one's surprise, it was completed relatively quick and now we have access to this comically large golden spoon. Surprisingly, it's actually pretty useful as a melee, sporting the highest damage in the game while also requiring the shortest charge up time of its class. The only real downside it has is that it's got some slow animations and it's not really the best for concealment, but because of the high damage and the short charge time, it's actually a pretty good melee weapon. It even has a small chance to apply fire damage on every hit, and combined with the high knockdown it has, it makes it a surprisingly good weapon for stunning enemies. So here I am with a melee build, and I'm using the Sociopath perk deck with it, and I'm just dicking around. I'll share my build at the end of the video, but I'm not really here to talk about the weapon itself, really. Every payday YouTuber has already done videos about this weapon, and quite frankly, everyone probably knows all about it. Well then, Jen, why did you make a video about it? Well, I think we both know why I'm still here. So, I wanted to talk about two kind of important topics that came to my attention while using it. Firstly, I think this moon is actually a neat addition to the game. Like I mentioned previously, it's actually viable as a melee weapon, even on the hardest content in the game. And due to that, you can even make the argument that it's worth running melee skills, melee perk decks, or even making builds around it. Now, you'd be daft to say that it's the most optimal way to play, or that it's by any stretch of the imagination a good idea, but regardless, the fact of the matter is, this weapon alone does make it viable to make some fun builds, even if they aren't the best. Fun, usable builds are pretty much the core essence to this game, and I'd say one of the main reasons why I got so much playtime out of Payday as I did. Early Payday was probably the most fun in regards to being able to try funky setups and rolling with it because builds felt like they had more impact. Back when Payday was new, you know, the Ghost Tree was used for dodge and stealth, Enforcer was all about health and picking up the saw, Technician for armor, Mastermind for uh, other weird nonsense. One of my good friends, Soze, had a favorite niche build he called the Ghost Forcer. Stealth skills, but with a saw and a lot of health to keep you going even when you go loud, even with the suit. It was his go-to build since you could go to stealth with it and you could bring a saw, open up deposit boxes and whatnot, but even if you had to go loud, you still had a decently usable combat build, making it useful for heists like Framing Frame or Big Oil. Was it the best? Hell no. <laughs> but it was usable and it fulfilled specific purposes. These days, it feels like there's much less importance on builds since there's a very clear set of what's best. The best weapons, the best skills, perk decks, the rest, they just don't even compare. So many aspects of this game are just rendered useless because they've been ignored or forgotten. For example, the same saws and C4 too, they virtually see no use. Anything that isn't just building for max armor or max dodge, that's incredibly rare. And entire swaths of weapon are literally just reskins, while at the same time not really having a use, like pretty much most assault rifles and SMGs. I'm sure there are a few individuals out there that can make some weird stuff work, and there may be some funky builds, but in general, it more often than not doesn't work. And that's where this spoon kind of breathes some life into all this. It's actually a good weapon for melee related stuff. It's something that we haven't seen touched or mentioned in years, it seems like. Even the most recent rebalance of weapons left the game feeling more or less the same, with minor changes here or there. Over the years, Overkill just got, I guess, scared of trying to let us try fun things, and everything started to feel all samey. For example, Big Oil Day 1. This is always my prime example for butchering uniqueness. It was the only assassination-based stealth, and while it wasn't hard, you needed to understand the specific mechanics of it, and how it worked, and how it was different from other missions. But lo and behold, for absolutely no reason at all, Overkill changed it, and made it just like every other stealth mission. Drop an ECM, kill everyone inside, be done with it. It became utterly boring. Half of the fun was figuring out what made it tick. You had to figure out that you couldn't let gunshots ring out, that you couldn't just ECM it, that you had to do certain things. And most of the recent DLC from the past years they also feel pretty similar. You know, weapons that aren't really unique, DLC that doesn't really try to go against the grain. 
Overkill just ended up going with what's safe, and left this game in this kind of weird mess. The comically large spoon? It's a small, th it's a small gesture, but it kind of goes against that. It shows that they're still willing to try something different. Maybe that they still got some of that old payday in them. And hopefully, I think that it's something that they'll make a conscious effort for in Payday 3. Like I've always said to people, variety is the spice of life, and being able to use different builds, different weapons, and feel like they're making an impact is a gratifying feeling. Being able to try new things and being successful is a very large part of the replayability of Payday. So I hope that this spoon means good things for the future. Now, let's move on to that second topic that I wanted to talk about. This one probably isn't one that most people think about, since most of the people on the other side of the argument have probably long abandoned the game. But I think it's still fair to address this for a discussion. This comically large spoon is obviously very out there. It's a joke, it's incredibly goofy. And there's a very vocal group of people that, like I said, they used to be around, that complain that Payday has gotten a little too ridiculous. Payday the Heist, which is the first game of the series, was much more grounded in reality. Sure, you know, there's lots of stuff in games that you can't make realistic, like fighting off millions of cops, or being able to throw a band-aid on and heal bullet wounds, but it was definitely more realistic. Payday 2 also started off alright, but it got progressively goofier until we hit where we are now. You know, heists about stealing goats, a couple of YouTubers in the game, now, a comically large spoon as a weapon. Hell, I remember when the H3H3 H3 pack first came out and it got resounding negative responses from other Payday YouTubers saying, It's ridiculous! Like, yikes, man, they, they added a dude in the game. If you don't like it, just don't play him. So Payday's always had the goofy side to it, and you could really tell from the way they wrote the characters and handled the story. The story, it's, it's going wild now. There's even a supernatural side. It's getting kind of weird. As for me, I actually like the Goofy. We got too many games now that make it all serious with their setting. We're heroes, we're the last of humanity, yada yada. Even Payday, it had that super serious time period, you know? You're professional heisters, ultimate badasses, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck off with that. Let me steal some goats with coke up their ass. For some reason, a lot of people like to think that, because I played this game, I like gritty, realistic first-person shooters, and that I only like hardcore shit. Firstly, Payday isn't anywhere near realistic or hardcore. If I wanted any of that, I'd play Armor or something. Secondly, my personality and my taste in games says completely otherwise. Let's take Grand Theft Auto V, for example. Probably something common enough that people can relate to. Was it the gritty, realistic heists, or or the super hardcore races that I remember from that game? Nah. Nah. It was running over someone with a bicycle until they died for an assassination mission. That's what I remember. Even Payday, the most memorable shit that I've done, is stuff like Big Oil Day 1, stealth with a grenade launcher, doing Go Bank stealth with only C4, doing an entire heist with nothing but forklifts, or recreating Fight Club with modifiers. That's what I remember. That's what I enjoy. Hell, I'm the type of guy to post pictures of a giant dick I found on Twitter. As you can see, I love the Goofy. I embrace it. And I'm fine with the spoon being added to the game. But I also feel like Overkill might need to work on striking a good balance between the Goofy and the Serious. I don't think this game would be as memorable as it is if it only had one or the other. And these days, I think it's starting to be hard to tell where it stands. For example, the writers, for Locke specifically, they seem to feel the need for him to put in some weird joke or cack spool pretty much every line he has. He's been consistently one of my least liked characters of this entire game. And this is definitely a discussion that's way more open to opposing viewpoints, but I think it'd be interesting to see what people think, while at the same time, I wanted to share what I thought. I really hope that for Payday 3, they have a decent balance because Games that do, like uh, off the top of my head, something like Time Splitters, Metal Gear Solid, they're definitely way more memorable because they have the goofy and the serious, and they're both done well. So I don't know, I just kind of brought up the whole second topic, but I didn't really have a stance on it. You know, I just kind of felt like talking about it since it feels like it's kind of relevant, especially since we're right around the corner to Payday 3. But I don't know, maybe, maybe there wasn't a point. Is there even a point to any of the videos I make now? Is there a reason why I still do this? Maybe... 
Maybe this entire video was just an elaborate plan to get you guys to see a giant penis. Let's go with that.